Okay, here we go. Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Corpus and I want to talk a little bit more about the transition from Finale to Dorico. And you may have seen my video that I shared from 2023 which was all about that after I had kind of rage quit Finale and moved to Dorico. But as you're definitely aware, there was a big change in the landscape this week as Make Music announced that Finale would no longer be a program that they are supporting. And really, we've had the you know main software for notation as Finale, Sibelius, Dorico, and then there is the open source program MuseScore. But the closing of Finale has some major implications for all composers and arrangers and publishers. So it's a big deal. But I want to reiterate that it's not the end of the world. There's been a lot of fear about this, but you should know that the program's still going to work. And actually today, which is Tuesday, the day after they announced that they're going to be closing everything down, they made some pretty important adjustments to their announcement. So Finale has announced a good change, which is that they will be extending authorization indefinitely. This means if you were to rebuild your computer that you could reinstall and use Finale, uh, whichever version you have. One should note though, one of the big problems about all of this was as the OS update and change, right? Like we see this all the time with Mac, that all of a sudden old programs aren't supported and can't be opened. So that will inevitably happen with Finale, even with the extended indefinite authorization. So. It's a good thing for now, but you'll still need to move out of Finale eventually. So a problem that a lot of composers have been concerned about is how do you turn all of these old MuseX files, these Finale files, if you got thousands of them, how do you turn all those into XML to then load into something else? Well, I did a video recently that showed how you can do batch export of your music files, your MuseX files, and turn those into music XML files. So that is a great save. Now we have noticed though that there are differences between Finale 25.5 and Finale version 27. So something Make Music is extending, which is really nice, is that with any cross grade that you do to Dorico, it will include Finale version 27. So you'll receive the most up-to-date way from Make Music to transfer your files and export the Muse X to Music XML. So that's a good thing. That, that's a good thing. Uh, there's a lot of other things going on, but I think it's important if you are a Finale user, just remember the sky is not falling today. You can still use the program. It's not gonna stop working. Um, it's gonna be about a year until they stop kind of supporting it. And then, uh, you know, we'll have this indefinite authorization, but it's, it's not gonna end everything. Uh, this is gonna be, you know, a soft landing, hopefully. Now I say hopefully because I know a lot of us have a ton of Finale files that we don't want to necessarily move over. Uh, we're going to take a look at moving one of my files over and doing that batch export, but I just want to reiterate that there's a great community within the Steinberg network. When I moved from Finale to Dorico, I found a lot of people willing to answer my questions, which is amazing. And there's all sorts of places where you can get help for what you're looking for. Of course, there's this channel, subscribe to the channel, comment below, talk to the folks in the community. But I also run a Discord server for composers and sound designers, and that's a great place too, where you can reach out to the community and ask your dumb questions. Uh, and I've been very impressed at how the community has answered and helped me with my dumb questions during my move from Finale to Dorico. So I know this is a bit of an adjustment moving from Finale to Dorico, or from Finale to wherever you go, but you're gonna be okay. I know it's a fuck ton of work, and it's probably gonna be frustrating, but think of it as growing pains, right? You're gonna be okay. There's a great community here to support you. So don't get too scared about everything that's going on here. We're gonna be okay. All right, so let's take a look at some practical things in regards to the transition from Finale to Dorico. So I released a video earlier that talks all about the batch conversion or exporting of a file, but let's take a look real quickly. So this is one of my string quartets. This is uh, string quartet number four as we return. And yeah, let's see here. So this piece, this is pretty much done. You know, this has my fonts. This has all of the different uh, 
special markers that I input, all the dynamics and everything. And uh, as you know, as I talked about in the previous video, you would go to uh, File, Export, and then Music XML if you want to do this one, or if you want to do a batch, you would do Translate Folder. So I've already done that, and let's go ahead and open that up in Dorico. So in Dorico, we're going to create something new, and we're going to go open and import, and here we go. I've got a variety of different versions, but this is the one we're going to pull in, version 3. And here we go. Here's what we got. And I'm working in Dorico 5. And so let's uh, let's take a look here. So there's some text things that we would probably need to align. This is the flow, right? This is the name of the flow, and this is probably the title. Uh, I'm just guessing. I'd have to look here and engrave. It looks like, yeah, we got the flow number. So it took that information from the uh, XML. I'm just going to hold Control and use my mouse wheel, scroll out here a bit. And you know what looks really nice is that a lot of my fonts are pretty close. So that's nice. And then a lot of the slurs and things, they're all in the right spot. We've got the dynamics in the right spot, so that all looks good. And uh, it did a pretty good job importing everything in. There's obviously some things that need to be moved around, but uh, it's really not too shabby looking. Especially in showing some of things like this over here, right? We have this tremolo here. All this looks pretty good. Now it changed some of these uh, markers, but that's okay. I, could, I think I can change that myself. Uh, let's look at a part here. So this is a uh, file in one, and I'm going to hide this uh, measure thing over here. We're going to go to view and the system track, and I'm going to hide that because it makes it a little easier for us to see. So we've got some problems here, right? You would want to go into engrave and maybe move this to uh, a system break because that, you know, this, I prefer to have the start of a, you know, a new section on the left as opposed to on the right. Uh, so de there's some collisions that need to be worked out. Um, things like this right here, we've got some collisions. Let's take a look at something real quick, right? So we're in engrave. I want to take a look at the, so this is the staff spacing. And we can see that we could just uh, move these things around, right, to move that. That's really what you would have to do in Finale. But uh, here we're going to do something a little different. So we're going to go into Library. And then the layout options. So this is the layout window. And one of the nice things is if we were to, let's say, look at the, um, if we were to look at the page setup for all of this, uh, we could do something different here from each part. And that's nice compared to how Finale used to handle it. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that this is on letter and not on anything it shouldn't be. And over here in uh, my violin part, it looks like I'm at 7 millimeters. That's a pretty good part size, so I guess I'll keep that for right now. If I wanted to adjust any of the vertical spacing, right, like, you know, if you wanted to go really crazy and you wanted a lot of space in between the, uh, the staff um, or from staff to staff, uh, you could make that change here. Um, within a system, you know, we could go really crazy. Uh, you could see how this is changing. And if we have a lot of things moving around in here, like for example this, this uh, there's a lot going on here, and so it could be good to just give more space. So there's a lot of different ways we could handle this. So one thing that I talk a lot about on this channel is Touch OSC, and we're not going to dig into that today, but hotkeys are really important. And having used Finale for, I don't know, so since 2005, uh, I got really used to the number pad, right? So five on the number pad is a quarter note and four would be an eighth note. Um, I'm super used to that. And when I was working in Finale, I didn't like what their standard defaults were. Their number pad configuration included things like a double whole note. I don't need that regularly. So I decided it was better to just fit with what I knew. And this is one of the things I changed. So I think if you're moving from Finale, this makes a lot of sense. This isn't hurting Dorico. It makes sense to just keep your workflow somewhat similar. So play around with what the defaults are and then feel free to go into those preferences and choose your hotkeys. I showed in a video a long time ago about Finale how nobody really told us, but you could just use the F buttons, the function keys, 
to change your tools, like it's your articulation tool or your expression tool. And I literally was using Finale for well over a decade before I found that out. But if you're looking for a guide with Dorico, like a lot of software, if you just hit F1, you'll get the manual. So here we are, let's go ahead and hit F1, and it brings up this kind of help key where we can ask questions. And if I hit up here, it popped up a new window, and this window has all of the help and explains what it is. So if I go back here, I'm gonna hit F1 again, and now it's saying, okay, where are you having a question, right? I'm having a question about this area, so I'm gonna hit that. And now, once again, this popped up, and it's gonna take me through here. One of the great things about having a you know very modern manual is your ability to search things. So for example, let's search tuplet, because I wanna figure out how the hell do I get a triplet in there? So you could just search that, and it'll give you all these details. Let's say we wanna know about group dynamics. Group dynamics, and it's all gonna come up. And this functions like a website, and you could also see different versions of Dorico. Now, like I said, I'm on five, so I keep this up here, uh, but if you're using a different version, you can use this, and it'll be the most up-to-date information for you. So take advantage of that, because I think it's a really great way that they've kind of built in help systems uh, I don't always use it. Sometimes I'll just go to YouTube first, but this can be a great place to start. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is this jump system. So we have our big project here. I'm gonna make this into multiple pages for no reason at all. I'm gonna click on something in this. I'm gonna create a frame break, uh, and I'm gonna zoom out here because I'm gonna do this a couple times, and you'll see why. Because I want this to go to a couple different pages. So I'm going to go into write mode, I'm going to select here and hit shift A, and now I have my rehearsal numbers. Uh, and if I had set this up in the preferences as numbers, they would be numbers, but for right now, they're just letters, and that's okay. We're going to do one more. I'm going to take this, go to engrave, and we're going to jump it. So we have five different pages here. So let's imagine that this is actually a full page of you know, notes and information and stuff. So you're over here, and you want to go to rehearsal E. And on a piece like this that's five pages, this isn't a big deal, but if you've worked on orchestral works or opera works or choral works, you can have a ton of different pages, uh, and it can be difficult to remember where is rehearsal E. Is that on page 141 or 142? So there's a way to uh, alleviate that pain. Well, there's a way around this, which is going to be, we're going to go to edit, and then go to, and then go to rehearsal mark. And within the flow, you can choose, and I wanna go up to D, and now it's gonna take me there. There's a variety of different places you can jump to, you can jump to a measure or to a page, um, but I find this really helpful. Another thing I find super helpful that uh, did exist in Finale is the filter. So let's say we have a measure with a lot of stuff in it and we want to pull not all of the expressions as they are, we just want the dynamics. So let's take this measure here where we have B. Let's go ahead and add some dynamics. Now we could do it the old school way, right? We could click over here. So we're gonna select this C over here and we're gonna give it a mezzo piano. And then we're gonna select this whole triplet, give it a crescendo, and it's going over there. Now we could change that in the layout preferences. I'm not gonna cover that right now, but just know that you could change that. And over here, I think we're gonna go up to you know, three Fs. All right, that seems like a lot. So the other thing that's gonna be happening in this measure is these are all gonna be uh, short. So let's add some staccatos. Um, so back in finale days, those would be under the dynamic tool. All of this would be under expression tools. Uh, and so would our rehearsal letter, right? So if we were selecting all of it, we would get everything. So if we right click here, it gives us all of these options. And I want to filter. And all I want to select is all dynamics. But I could also select just the gradual dynamics, which is just going to be this. And then I could delete it. Or I could move it over. I could copy it, do whatever. And again, this seems pretty small in something like this, where we're talking about one measure on a single instrument. But if you're working on a band piece, and you want to take all of those crescendi, crescendos, 
and you want to delete them and change them, it's very easy to do. Select all, filter, grab it. And guess what? You can also set those to a hotkey. Some of the hotkeys that I have set are showing voice colors like layers, similar to what we had in Finale, uh, duplicating, repeating, changing the grid, changing the note length, beaming things together, grouping dynamics, ungrouping dynamics. There's a lot of different things you can do. The sky is the limit. So if you are moving to Dorico, it could be overwhelming because there's a lot you can do, but I recommend as you're working, when you run into a problem, make a note of that and be like, damn it, I am always trying to do this one thing. And maybe we could set up a hotkey for that so that it's super simple for you to do that from here on out. In fact, if you wanted those F keys, those function keys, you could set, let's say F8 to your filter, or you could set uh, F7 to just filter dynamics alone. So there's a lot of different ways that Dorico can work for you. So you don't necessarily have to think that you have to mold to this new software. Also remember that because this is a smarter software, it can kind of mold to you. That being said, I'm sure there are things that the programmers want us to do and want us to think in a certain way, but you know, this is a transition for all of us. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about because there's a billion different things that we could talk about is uh, global and local settings. Now we've all run into the problem in Finale. Let's say you had some text that said brassy and you really want the horns to just like, you know, get really brassy. So you put in that text in the, you know, uh, the parts, but then it's also showing in the score. Or perhaps in the score, you want to give a marking to a conductor or some program notes. Now those are showing in the parts and you had to say, uh, you know, hide. There are ways around what we do and how we interact between local things and global things that are gonna impact all of the different parts and score. So let's take a look at that. Let's take this pianissimo, and over here we're showing all of the parameters, but let's look at just local only real quick. So let's say that uh, for the score here, you know, we don't really need to uh, show something, so we're gonna put this in parentheses. And because these are grouped, because if you see I'm selecting this and these are all blue. So in the score, locally, we have them all in a parentheses. But if we look at the violin one part, it does not have parentheses. Also, if we look at any of the other parts, it doesn't have parentheses. So there are a lot of options. As we see Finale sunsetting, you could move to Muse score, you could move to Sibelius, you could move to Dorico. I personally really like Dorico. And there's a lot of good things happening with MuseScore, which are really impressive and a lot of community support. Sibelius is fine, but to me, it's kind of the same as Finale. And you, if you watch this channel, you know how I feel about Avid and their just lack of ability to update things to a standard that I think music technology should be updated to. So that's one of the reasons I really like Dorico. I'm a tech person. I enjoy the updated technology and I want shit to work. There is no wrong answer. Choose whatever is best for your workflow. I work in Sibelius plenty. I did that like a week ago. Uh, I don't really use MuseScore ever. I've downloaded it and tinkered around in it, but because I have other programs, I just work in those. So, you know, download the trial, see what you think. And if you like it, take advantage of the cross grade sale. So hopefully you learned something in this video and you can like this video, comment your questions below, be sure to subscribe to the channel. There's lots more to cover, especially in talking about Dorico and the many different benefits I think it will have in moving from Finale. But wherever it is that you go from Finale, I think there's a lot of different things that can make your life a little easier. I also wanted to let you know about something new on the channel, which is memberships. There's three different levels and you can support the channel and all of the information that I'm trying to share with you. Uh, there's a variety of different levels that you can participate in and get a variety of different benefits. So thanks for joining if you are a member. Uh, I'm like, really excited to uh, do more videos and engage with the community more, especially in the coming years. Uh, there's also going to be some other videos about arts management stuff again, which I haven't done in a while. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, take care of yourself. Don't worry, you're going to be okay. And I'll see you next time.